Gennady Gennadievich Golovkin, aka Triple G, has to be considered one of the most devastating modern middleweights. He has proved his talent time and time again with his tremendous punching power, knockouts, and a pressurizing style that has always been fan friendly and entertaining, or as Triple G puts it. A big drama show. Golovkin turned pro at 24 and came from a country like Kazakhstan with no huge history in professional boxing before him. He simply had to go all out to show why he was one of the best in the world. But to get to this level requires absolute dedication and hard work to your craft before going under those bright lights. In this video today, I'm going to take a look at Golovkin's training routines, methods during his dominating middleweight run under trainer Abel Sanchez, but also how some of this may have changed under his most recent trainer, Jonathan Banks. So on that note, let's get right into it. Now before getting into the specific training areas Golovkin likes to work on, I wanted to share his actual training routine under Sanchez, and this has been revealed in multiple interviews and sources from the likes of Sky Sports and GQ. It's also important to remember Gennady is a full-time professional in camp doing these routines, so you won't be able to implement all this within your own if that's what you're thinking. But you can definitely take some of these ideas into your own plan. But here it is. On any typical training day, he'll usually wake up at 5am and get ready and head down to the gym and do some stretching. At 6am, this is when he'll then go out in his morning run, which is around 3.5 to 4 miles. On Tuesday and Thursdays though, he'll do sprints. And after this, he'll make sure to do some stretching and core work. He'll then have his lunch and a rest before his afternoon session, which starts at 3pm. Now, Golovkin would do different things on certain days, so a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it would be starting off with shadow boxing before doing around eight rounds of sparring. After this, he would then do additional core work and then maybe some other additional strength and conditioning exercises. On a Tuesday and Thursday, however, it would be more strength and conditioning focused, which I'll touch on later, and also boxing training related, which might be like heavy bag or mitt work, and then finishing off with core work at the end of that session. After this was all done, he would then focus on his recovery, so he might have an ice bath or a sauna. He would then go out and have his dinner and then get his rest and sleep in preparation for the next day. On a Saturday though, he would do a nine mile run instead and do some stretching and also core work to finish off. And on a Sunday, it would be a rest day. So as you can tell from what I've just discussed, Golovkin's routine is pretty full on, but it's not surprising when you consider the level he has got to. It should also be noted that his former trainer Sanchez revealed he wouldn't spar around 9-10 to 10 days before a fight, while other areas of this routine would be reduced to obviously reduce things like fatigue and prevent injuries. And this is the same with most top professional boxing camps, but this can obviously vary. Now let's take a closer look at the individual elements of his training. Cardio like any great champion in boxing, Golovkin certainly doesn't miss his road work. In fact, this is a huge part of his overall training plan to this day. Each day, Golovkin is at least doing a 3.5 to 4 mile run, along with a longer 9 mile run at the end of the week. Not only that, he is trained in Big Bear, California for the majority of his pro career. The reason this is so impressive is that he's running at elevation almost 9,000 feet above sea level, meaning he is constantly running at high altitude. Here, there's less oxygen in the air for your muscles, making it much harder to work out. This means you will get tired much more quickly if you're not used to it. And with Golovkin doing it almost every day, it makes it almost remarkable. It's no wonder he's had such a great engine for the majority of his career. To add further resistance, sometimes Gennady will run with light dumbbells, which can help increase your effort, heart rate, and the calories that you burn. In terms of other cardio, it includes explosive interval sprints, which obviously helps simulate that explosiveness for your knockout punching power or fighting in bursts, which Gennady does so well, while he'll also race his fellow gym partners, no doubt to help build up that competitive spirit of winning. Triple G will also do 10 to 15 minutes of jump rope before he starts his afternoon boxing session as a warm-up usually, and he's also been seen to go out on bike rides in the mountainous terrain some days, no doubt to help change things up in his training routine from running all the time. Boxing training. Training the Mexican style. 
Now in terms of Gennady's style of fighting, he originally comes from a Soviet European style with all the solid boxing fundamentals in its teachings. Some regard this style as a bit rigid in its method at times. However, this old school style requires the training to be in a strict format, something Triple G has confirmed to like on many occasions. I like old. Old music, old school, old coach. Old friends. <laughs> as he much prefers the traditional old school form of boxing training as part of his routine. When he first moved over to America for training camps, I think it helped that he was with Abel Sanchez. He is in much respect more of an old school trainer in his methods as well, but someone who has a different philosophy in the style of fighting, which is of course a pressurising Mexican style. In an interview before his fight with Kel Brook, Abel said this about Gennady coming into the gym and taking on his ideas and style of fighting. When I first got him six and a half years ago, I asked him to give me three years without any questions or interruptions saying this is the way I used to do it before. Let me do my job for three years and I promised you'd be the best middleweight in the world. To this day, six and a half years later, he still hasn't questioned anything. He says, coach, this is your school. I'm fortunate as a coach to have a pupil like that. This is all stuff that I've designed and implemented into his training regime and I'm fortunate he came to me with heavy hands. We've been able to develop that even more. Overall, I think this is a very positive sign of Gennady's trust in his coach at the time and you can't deny Abel's impact as a trainer and getting him to the level he has. Triple G has really developed into this style and never really looked back changing into an entertaining pressure fighter who would set up tremendous punching knockouts. For Gennady adapting to this style, it's all been about intensity, explosiveness and precision. From watching any of his boxing training, you can tell he trains how he fights and this is a very good philosophy and way of training. Shadow Boxing For Triple G's shadow boxing, it is truly impressive when he's doing this as he simply flows in between each punch and throws it with such preciseness. Not only that, he always makes sure he does at least two or three movements at any time, including using footwork, head movement or punches. This is a really good rule of thumb for any boxing exercise, even sparring, making sure you're at least doing two of the three at one time. For example, using footwork while punching or using head movement after throwing punches. Gennady is a great example to study if you're looking to improve this area. He will also shadow box with light dumbbells, which helps him with his shoulder muscle endurance. You will see a lot of top professionals using these when shadow boxing, but I'll go into more detail on this later in the video. The heavy bag. The boxer's best friend and no doubt one for Golovkin in his training. This is where he can really practice his technique with full power. From looking at the footage, you can tell he is focusing on precision, technique and power. But what I also like about his work here is that he makes sure to use footwork while also changing the tempo from light to power shots in between. You can't constantly be throwing bombs, even if you're Triple G. You'll also see him try out different combinations and using the jab, as sometimes Golovkin gets depicted as just someone that throws power punches. But in actual fact, he is a mix of chaos as he's always thinking two steps ahead and this is evident even watching him on the heavy bag. Mitwork. Now under Sanchez and even Banks to an extent, Golovkin trains very simple combinations with the main focus being on setups, precision and power as I've just discussed. With Abel Sanchez on the mitts, you can tell he's trying to help Gennady set up his wide left looping hooks uppercuts and even those deadly overhand or lead straight rights. He would also get him to double up his left hand with a snappy left hook before unleashing an immediately powerful follow up left hook or uppercut. These punches are where Abel clearly knew Gennady would do his most damage and is trying to make him as efficient as possible when throwing these punches with the correct form and power. A lot of the time you will actually see these combinations in his training materialize in the ring as I've just shown you in the footage. Sanchez would also like to use the punch shield of Gennady too, which is also a very useful training tool to work on your punch power variation. While under Jonathan Banks, it's almost been the opposite. The former Kronk fighter is making Gennady think more by using his jab, footwork, defensive movement 
I personally, I really like the way Jonathan Banks is introducing the jab more into Golovkin's mitt work. In my opinion, the Kazakh has one of the best jabs in boxing, and it's important that he utilizes this, even in his training. Regardless of who is on the pads with Gennady, this is a very important practice for him to put in real situations to throw these punches. Sparring. Now, sparring is the main area in terms of how Gennady really gets the most at his training camps, where he can put into practice his power shots, combinations, and game plan, while also working on his overall boxing skills and defense against partners. However, this has not always been an easy task for the likes of Abel Sanchez, who has struggled to get good sparring partners over the years due to the power Gennady possesses. A lot of his sparring partners actually have to wear protective bodysuits, as the Kazakh is so accurate with his body punches. Many admit that if they didn't wear them, they would break their ribs and have to go back home, something former super middleweight world champion George Groves fell victim to when sparring him. I'm a wily old dog by now, I've been in here with everyone. You can't do touch, touch, whip with me and get it off. But he was like, he was, he was touch, touch, whip. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know that one was coming. You know, like, it wasn't like I could get the arm there in time, but it, you know, he's, he's got through it. I didn't even see it coming. Uh, and then he just goes, touch, touch, whip. And I just hear this crack. I was like, mm, that's the, that's my rib. <laughs> so I come back to the corner and I'm like, oh, I think he's broke my rib. They're like, all right, what do you want to do? Get I was like, well, I don't want to get out, but <laughs> Abel, um, he's hurt his rib. It's like, oh, okay. Do you know where the hospital is? <laughs> In terms of his actual sparring partners, Golovkin has been known to spar with bigger guys, including the likes of former cruiserweight champ Gaziev, former light heavyweight champion Kovalev, and even former upcoming super middleweight champion David Benavides. His most famous spar, of course, was with Canelo Alvarez many years before they'd get in the ring. However, you'd be surprised who Sanchez revealed as some of the most competitive spars Golovkin had. I think that the sparring with Angulo was probably the most memorable because Angulo came here trying to prove a point and uh, he couldn't. I think Ryan Coyne was probably the only guy who we had up here who's really uh, been able to hang in there uh, with Gennady, at little, uh, I'd say at 80%, only because Ryan was a good boxer and was moving a lot and, and holding Gennady a lot of experience. So it was, uh, he was probably the, the best sparring other than Angulo that we've had up here for him. Strength and conditioning. A huge part of Golovkin's training is obviously his strength and conditioning training. And when you consider everything else, it's insane how he's able to add this in with such intensity that he does. But first off, before any workout starts for Triple G, he is stretching. This is often something many people can't be bothered with or forget to do. Doing this will help improve your athletic performance, mobility, flexibility, and also prevent injuries. Glovkin will make sure to stretch out his shoulders, chest, and leg muscles, which are also key for any boxer. A more unique and interesting way he stretches is by using a stick to further help his flexibility and also the rotational movements which are so key in boxing. For his core work, Sanchez revealed that he could do up to about 3,500 reps of different core exercises in a day, broken into three different periods. Obviously core work is very important for any boxer as the stronger your core is, the harder you can punch and Gennady's strong core helps him able to transfer his power through the rotation when throwing those punches, which is so vital. I recommend you check out Fight Hub TV's footage of his whole complete ab workout. In terms of using weights, it's not in the traditional sense of doing squats or bench press. Sanchez instead prefers his fighters and Golovkin to use lighter dumbbells or weighted bars for their strength and conditioning, but through lots of repetition instead. Sanchez explained to Sky Sports. I don't feel that weights help us. That's not because I feel that they're bad for you. There are certain instances when weights have to be used. But in this particular instance, for Gennady and other smaller fighters that I have, I don't use weights because I never have. For example, Triple G will do a full strength conditioning session using light dumbbells while shadow boxing, doing straight punches, then hooks for four minutes at a time before eventually adding in lateral raises and shoulder mobility and endurance exercises. Just by watching him, you can understand where his punching power comes from and why he is so durable throughout his career. Once again, I recommend you check out Fight Hub TV's video of this full routine. He will also do a lot of shoulder and rotational exercise routines with the weighted bars, as I just mentioned, which also help 
work on his whole upper body and rotational movements. Other more unique things that I've seen him do include sled pulling and pushing, which helps strengthen things like your glutes and hamstrings, quads and core as well. And also Abel Sanchez encourages the use of resistance bands. A muscle group that a lot of people forget about though is your forearm and grip strength. And this is absolutely key for Gennady to help generate his power and the snap in his punches. Your punching power is mostly generated from the legs and hips and using rotational movement for your core. But it is actually your forearms that can act as a strong stable during the punch impact due to the tension of your grip when landing that punch. Aside from the actual technique, the exercises he used to develop the muscle include the kettlebell rolls from side to side, which are tremendously hard to do if you've never tried it, while he'll also do pull-ups to develop this too. You just have to watch him handshake and wrestle the former heavyweight contender Malik Scott to understand how strong he is. Over the years, we've seen Golovkin chin get tested many times while in the ring. Now, as much as he might just have a good chin to survive the rigors of professional boxing, his neck strengthening exercises are key in developing the neck muscles so he can withstand any punch he does receive. This is mainly through neck isometric exercises and also weighted neck exercises, using up and down and sideways movements with the neck. Diet and cutting weight. Now after going through all the intense training, he is in constant need to fuel himself, so he's able to work at the highest level throughout his training camp. In an interview with GQ, he revealed what he would do in a typical training day camp. For breakfast, he would have oatmeal, eggs and juice. At lunch, he would have grilled chicken or fish, potatoes and salad. While at dinner, he would have steak or fish with mixed vegetables and potatoes. In terms of outside this, he would drink lots of water and also have smoothies with whole foods, but no supplements or powder after each workout. As Golovkin very much lives up to that Mexican style, he has fallen victim to some delicious Mexican cuisine for which I can't blame him. He was very lucky there was a very popular restaurant near the gym when working under Sanchez. He said, I love eating Mexican food. There's a restaurant in Big Bear, High Sedena, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. We eat there several times every week. I like the red salsa, the ribs, shrimp and chicken. I will eat steak once or twice every week. I won't eat bread, sweets or junk, no sodas. When I am not training, I love steak, lots of steak. Golovkin could be considered a small or natural middleweight and will often weigh 163 or 164 pounds 30 days out from the fight. This means he only has to start water cutting a few days before the fight night. For Gennady, on fight night, former trainer Sanchez said to Sky Sports that most opponents were probably a lot heavier, around 175 to 180 pounds come fight night. Usually Golovkin weighs 169, 170 pounds on the night, which is 10 pounds heavier than the middleweight limit. In terms of his recovery, it seems that areas to help include this include the ice bath, steam room or sauna, but under Sanchez, it was very much up to the fighter to look after themselves after training. Everything is here, there's ice, the ice bath, steam room, sauna, stretching does a lot for them as well, and training these guys to take care of themselves. They have to take care of their bodies, I'm not going to baby them. I think too much emphasis is put on science, they know what they have to do. Sugar Ray Robinson didn't have all this. Strategy and Mentality Sanchez is very much a trainer that teaches his fighters to throw 1-2-3 combinations before moving into position to unload their power shots. You only need to watch and see Sanchez work in the mitts with Golovkin to see this philosophy in action, but his idea is not to be greedy and punch with precision. Abel also developed a gym culture and philosophy to help Triple G have that more killer instinct and create a more fan-friendly style and approach. This way, it helps entertain the fans and will in turn help fighters financially, as Abel wants them to understand that boxing is an entertainment business. Knowing someone is going to look for the knockout and try put on a good fight is something as hardcore or even casual fans want to see. I think it does help that Golovkin has had such a big amateur career. This has in turn helped him able to adapt to that entertaining pro style. But naturally, as much as Triple G is always smiling and training outside the ring, when it comes to business, his killer instinct comes out. You just need to look at his face when he throws a punch. 
Sanchez would also make sure Gennady and his gym mates would study the greats by putting on classic fights while they were training. Not only that, there was a big responsibility of Golovkin in the gym to lead. They follow his personality and follow Gennady. He leads by example in the gym. He understands that he's the leader in the gym for different guys and he will help correct other gym members if they are doing something wrong or even technique. Training under Banks After nine years of working together, Golovkin decided he would move on from Abel Sanchez in a somewhat messy breakup between the two. After so much success together, it was sad to see the duo split, but just like with most things in life, things change. Gennady felt he had grown stagnant and needed something different if he was to reach the top again after his close defeat to Canelo. The man chosen for the job was Jonathan Banks, trained by and an understudy to the great Emmanuel Stewart and his Kronk philosophy, where he had also worked with the likes of Vladimir Klitschko. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can tell Banks maybe has a more boxing first mentality rather than a search and destroy philosophy under Sanchez. In an interview with Teddy Atlas on his podcast, he revealed what his focus is with Gennady. The focus is usually, for me, something I was taught by, by my mentor, the late, the late Emmanuel Stewart, about the timing and the rhythm. You know, Ray Robinson once said that everything has a rhythm to it, like a heartbeat. Fighters need to have a rhythm. Everything needs to have a rhythm to it. And that was the premise of the teaching that we learned down in that crunk gym, down in that basement, was having a rhythm. Like not just walking up to somebody flat footed, just looking for a knockout. It, the rhythm was the very important. So this is what I want to, to get to. This is what I want to stick to. I want this young, this young man. I'm like, look, we got to find your rhythm. Like we start off, we go start off with mine. But in, in me giving you mine, you got to find yours. And once you find your rhythm, then you can start letting your hands go at a pace where you're not going to get tired because this is all off your rhythm. I think this is a very interesting insight and approach by Banks as Golovkin is not in his prime anymore or a young man. He needs to use his rhythm, timing, experience to really make a difference in fights. Hunting down fighters is simply not an option like it was in the past, and I actually believe Golovkin has improved in some areas under Banks, especially his jab. In terms of other areas Golovkin changed under Banks includes strength and conditioning coaches and dietitians, something he didn't really use under Sanchez. Final thoughts. Gennady, in my opinion, is one of those unbelievable athletes and freaks in boxing. This is mainly due to the way he trains and has dedicated himself to the sport, all with the intention of being incredibly powerful and durable no matter who the opponent is. For that reason, it is no surprise he's become the pound for pound star during his career. I also think the fact he trains up in the solitude and quietness in Big Bear at the high altitude shows what how mentally strong he is as he knows this sport requires 100% dedication if you wish to leave your mark as one of the very best. And this is without a doubt his boxing home now. Golovkin is a man that loves this sport. He's a student of the game, a leader in the gym, and simply someone who trains his hardest to win. Give me another here, this level, Gennady. This level. <laughs> I'm not machine. You know why? Because machine sometimes is broken. I'm not broken. <laughs> and that wraps up this video, guys. Why not check out my Golovkin boxing style breakdown or my training breakdown on his rival, Canelo Alvarez. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.